Hey guys, this is John Schultz with Axial Racing. Hey, um, I'm going to go over how to build shocks properly. This is something that has been a pet peeve of mine, watching people build shocks online with pliers and no oil. And it's just, it just, it's just so wrong. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to build, be building AX30 103 part number shocks, uh, Icon 60 by 90 millimeter aluminum shock set for my SX-102. Um, it's pretty simple on how to build shocks. I've already built one here. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over it real quick. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, first thing you want to do when your hands don't have any oil on them is go ahead and take and put um, the stickers that go on the uh, aluminum reservoirs. Go ahead and get those on there first because if you have any oil whatsoever on your fingers and get it on to this reservoir, it will not stick. So if you have that problem, the cool thing is Axial gives you four so that way you can go ahead and clean them and have another set to put on there or have them in your your um, your pack in case you get one peeled off on, on the trail and you want to replace it later. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, I went ahead and screwed the reservoir to the cap. Uh, I went ahead and put the Eclipse on the shaft with the machine piston. Uh, I use this fancy gadget here. Uh, it puts your Eclipse on your, your shafts. Um, it, it's from Anderson. I'm not even sure where I got this, but it's a really cool tool. Um, I used my 1.5 to uh, put that in there. And then... Um, this is where it gets kind of technical. It's it's pretty simple. Um, I go ahead and I put. There's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, I'll go ahead and put my O-rings, the spacer with the O-rings in it, and I'll put the cap on it. Uh, now, there's a couple ways of doing this. Some guys will leave the O-rings in the bag and they'll put a a, a couple drops of oil uh, inside the bag. For about 15-20 minutes to help get the oils into the uh, o-rings uh, what i do is i use this green slime it's a team associated product for uh, racers that build their shocks and i'll just go ahead and i'll just squeeze it right down the center there and that helps lubricate the 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 shaft with these threads and i'll go ahead and put a little bit on here too um, never could be too too uh, safe uh, protecting the O-rings inside the shock shaft. Um, and what that does is um, when you slide your shaft through, it actually lubricates the O-ring to let that thing slide through without tearing an O-ring or uh, ripping an O-ring or, or spitting an O-ring inside. And that way your O-rings stay real nice and smooth. Now also when you slide that in, you want to make sure that everything is 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 smooth now you're going to have some drag in there uh, just because you know there's no oil in here yet but if you're you feel like it's binding go ahead and take it apart and and turn it around and slide your piston on this side here to make sure your piston is is the proper size some of the pistons that come on trees they're not 100 percent correct so you might need to take a exacto knife and clean it up or say um some sandpaper and sand it down a little bit just so everything is real nice and smooth when you have bind suspension binds it it it, it doesn't uh, let your suspension react like it's supposed to um, next step is i'll go ahead and i'll throw uh, my spring adjuster on here now the next critical thing you want to do here is make sure you have the proper tools uh, this is my aluminum shock uh, pliers and what that does is it holds your shock shaft without hurting a shock shaft because it's soft aluminum. And you can go ahead and spin your, your eyelet on there if you can hang on to it. So get that on there. And I'll go down until I feel it just kind of stop. And once it gets kind of hard, I'll stop. I'll take a caliper and I'll measure both of them to make sure that I have the proper stroke on both sides. So if this one's longer than this one, I'll 
either screw this one in or I'll loosen this one up to make sure they're equal. So once you have your your uh, your shock lengths the same, uh, you'll be good good to go there. Uh, take your uh, your pivot ball. Go ahead and pop that in. Now all you have to do is hold it and turn it and pull this, and it should pop right on. Um, and that should be pretty simple right there. That should uh, keep your shocks moving real nice and smooth. Now, what I'll do is um, I usually don't use the oil that comes in the packages or the kits for the simple fact is is that I guess it's the racer instinct in me is I will always want to know what shock oil cons consistency I have in my dampening. So I always use a, some kind of race brand. I'm using some factory team uh, 30 weight uh, shock fluid here. And I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll pour some in there until I see it get about halfway. I got a little bit more than halfway there. And I'll just kind of cycle it about a quarter stroke here. And the reason why I'm cycling is get all the, you see the air bubbles coming to the top. Get all the air bubbles from the bottom. <clears throat> and then a lot of times I'll just let this thing set. Some people will take a tool and they'll just tap the side. Um, there are some fancy machines out there that actually kind of vibrate or they'll suck uh, the, uh, you know, the, their vacuum so they'll suck the air out of the fluid. Now this is, uh, this is kind of critical here. Um, when I push the shock down, you'll see the oil come to the top. So the cap is flat. Um, I've already put the O-ring in there, uh, already set the O-ring in there from the kit. And uh, I'll push it all the way down until I get right to the top. And I'll take a rag or paper towel or something and I'll go ahead and wipe that right off. Because the flu is not going to go anywhere else. It's flat in there. So, uh, and then I'll go ahead and I'll screw this on. Um, what happens a lot when people build shocks is they overfill them. So, you know, well, that's smooth. So that, that came out really nice and smooth. Now, snug that up. <clears throat> wipe all the oil off of it. Um, if your shock goes down and stops right there, that's it's hydraulicing. There's too much oil in it. The reason why I put the piston all the way up and then I wipe the oil off the top because now it, it cannot hydraulic. There's no, there's nowhere, uh, there's no oil to go anywhere else but stays inside the shock body. So you're not fighting it. It'll go down. It'll it'll rebound a little bit because there's a little bit of air in there, but there's uh, there's no hydraulic going on. A lot of guys will overfill their shocks. And when they push it down, it stops. They'll just throw them on and run it. What that does is it blows out the O-ring. So um, it pushes the O-ring past here. It blows the, the seal up on top. Um, people, will, I've seen people bid in shock shafts. I've seen people uh, blow the plastic cap off the top. So you want to make sure you get the proper shock um, fluid inside the, the, the shock itself. Now, after I get that all together, I'll make sure everything's clean. You can even spray it down with some kind of motor spray or you know soft rag or something. And I'll put my springs on. The slider in the middle. The bottom piece. And then the shock cup. Now, there you go. My shocks are complete. Nice and smooth. Oh, let's put the top. Now this here is your pivot ball for your shock. Um, the flat part, I always make sure that's the part that's going to go up against the shock tower. So when you look at this one here, see where that's sitting. I'll go ahead and I'll just go ahead and put that one on the opposite side. Put it on there like that. I'll just take it, pop it right in. And there you go. Now, these come in the kit. These are rubber spacers to limit your, your travel and your shocks. I don't like running these because uh, I want all the travel articulation that I can get to a certain extent. Too much articulation sometimes hurt it, but I find with the SCX 10 twos, SCX 10s that these shocks with no spacers are the proper, um, 
the proper uh, uh, travel. So there you go. Um, cut and dry, guys. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Facebook. You can go to Schultz RC Lab or John Schultz, and uh, I can walk you through it. But there you go. Pretty simple.